Hi, it's Tristan here again. In our first video about the InfoSemantics Interactive Master Widget, we looked at the concepts involved. In this tutorial, we'll use the Master Widget together with the Interactive Drag and Drop Widget to build a question with multiple correct answers. By the way, we've recently updated all our widgets and one of the features we've added to our Interactive Widgets is compatibility with the Master Widget. So if you already have one of our Interactive Widgets, check its version number against this table to make sure that the version you're using is compatible with the Master Widget. Otherwise, you'll need to download the latest version from our website. Before we start building the question, let's discuss the layout of the widget interface. When you're setting up the master widget, you follow a process and we've tried to reflect the order of these steps in the sections within the widget interface. The first section is called Slave Objects. Here you tell the master widget which interactive objects it should listen to. We think of these interactive objects as becoming the master's slaves, so we call them slave objects. The next section is called scoring. Here you assign points to the success or failure of each slave object. You can assign points anywhere between negative 100 to positive 100. The third section, called success failure, is the most important one. Here you set up how the widget will interpret the slave object success failure data when the master widget reports its own success failure. The fourth section, evaluation, decides when the widget reports success or failure. For example, it can evaluate success or failure each time a slave object reports, or after all slave objects have reported, or when the audience clicks on a specified slide object. Then you have a preferences section where you can alter pausing options and get the widget to report its internal score to a captivate variable, perhaps for use in some cool advanced actions you're building into your course. Lastly, you have the about tab where you can spend literally hours staring at our pretty logo. Anyway, enough theory, time for practice. Here's the deal. We're going to create an interaction where the audience assembles a water molecule. On the slide, we've got a blank molecule and various atoms floating around outside it. The correct formula for water, as I'm sure you're aware, is H2O. But is that two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, or two oxygen atoms and one hydrogen atom? We want the audience to demonstrate they know the correct formula by dragging two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom into the molecule. But there's a problem. If the learner only had one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms to choose from, we'd be making things far too easy for them. So to make the interaction more challenging, we've supplied two oxygen atoms that could be dragged into the molecule. This means the question has two potentially correct answers. One if the learner uses the first oxygen atom, the other if they choose to use the second oxygen atom. Now the interactive drag and drop widget can only handle a single correct answer, not multiple correct answers. This is where the interactive master widget saves the day. To allow for multiple correct answers, we'll add an interactive drag and drop widget add the atoms as drag objects and the molecule as a target object. We'll set up the correct answer in this case as the two hydrogen atoms and the first oxygen atom. We will change a few settings in the preferences tab like making that caption on the stage the submit button and click OK to save and exit widget properties. Then we'll just copy the drag and drop widget double click the new copy to open its widget properties and change its correct answer to the other oxygen atom. Now we have two drag and drop widgets on stage, each covering a different correct answer. Let's make them report to the quiz. If we tried the question now, then technically we could use either oxygen atom to answer the question. However, when we viewed the quiz results, we'd find that no matter what our learner did, they would always get at least one of the quiz questions wrong and could never achieve a perfect 100% score. 
That's because there were two drag and drop widgets reporting to the quiz, but only one could ever be successful. Now, many learners would complain about never being able to get a perfect score. So, how can we fix this? Remember, in the introduction, we illustrated the master widget as being like a funnel. It takes multiple success failure reports and breaks them down into a single report. This is exactly what we need to happen so our learners can achieve a full 100% score. We need to find a way to amalgamate the two separate drag and drop widget success failure reports into a single one, where if either of the two widgets achieve success, then we count it as a perfect score for the learner. So first of all, we will need to turn off reporting for both drag and drop widgets, then rename them O1 correct answer and O2 correct answer. Now we'll insert a master widget and follow these steps. Step one, add slave objects. These are our two drag and drop widgets, O1 correct answer and O2 correct answer. We don't need internal scoring for this question, so we'll leave that at the default settings and jump to the third section, where we'll tell the master widget how to report success or failure. Notice the success and failure radio buttons here. What do these do? Well, in the bottom half of the screen, we create a rule. If that rule is met, the master widget will report whichever criteria we've selected up the top here. If the rule is not met, then the master widget will report the opposite. In our case, if either drag and drop slave reports success, then we know the audience got the question correct because they must have dragged two hydrogen atoms and one of the two oxygen atoms into the center. So for this example, we need to use the first rule type based on slave success failure. Now for the second part of the decision, we want the master widget to report success if any one slave reports success, which is the default setting. By the way, this would also mean if both slaves were to report failure, then the master widget would report failure too. Next, we need to decide when the widget will evaluate these rules we just set up. What will trigger the evaluation? Well, we've already set up the drag and drop widgets to report success or failure when the audience clicks the submit caption on our slide. We can make the master widget do the same by selecting evaluate when this object is clicked and typing the item name of the submit caption into the field provided. Finally, we'll jump over to the miscellaneous section, turn on reset success failure criteria after action for just in case we later allow the audience to retry the question. And that's all for the master widgets properties. We'll click OK to exit and turn on reporting for the master widget. It's now the only widget of the three found on this slide that will report success failure and a score. After a little cleanup, the question is ready to go. Now when we publish or preview the question, regardless of which correct answer we choose, the question will come back as successful and we can score a full 100% in the quiz because the master widget allowed us to build an interaction that had multiple correct answer scenarios. So in conclusion, let's review the different sections of the master widgets properties dialog again. The slave objects section is where you add the interactive objects the master widget should listen to. The scoring section is where you set up numeric weightings for success and failure reports of each slave object. Success failure is where you indicate how the widget will interpret the slave object's successes or failures when calculating its own success failure to report. The evaluation section allows you to determine what will trigger the widget to make the evaluation decision. And the last section allows you to tinker with some preferences in case you want to control the slide pausing behavior or allow the learner to repeat the interaction multiple times. As you can see, the master widget is very powerful, allowing you to do things only previously possible for Flash ActionScript programmers. But be warned, it will challenge your creativity. We hope this tutorial has given you some ideas about how you might use the master widget for your own courses. If you have any questions, feel free to contact InfoSemantics via email or using the contact form on our website. If you'd like to give the master widget a try, click here to download an unlimited trial version. Goodbye for now, and thanks for watching.